Hello and welcome to the latest episode of We're Going Chasing. Uh, we're very happy to have the first podcast run, Killian. Yeah, super. In fairness, yeah, it was it was it was very good. Like it's nice to be back. Blow the cobwebs off now for the the second video and then the the Rob Core one to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a bit rusty, all right. <laughs> but uh, with the whole summer, you were more than me, I suppose. Like I'd be fairly good in fairness, but uh, you were very rusty <laughs> now yourself. It was nice to get you. Get the WD forty out and cover it off. Yeah, yeah, very true. Well, we're getting closer the whole time, anyway. Uh, thank God to the start of the season. The biggest bit of news really was Constitution Hill. Um, you know, obviously staying over hurdles and that. And I thought that the whole thing was pure and utter nonsense. Um, to be honest with you, like you hear people saying that there's no fun in seeing horses twenty to one on and ten to one on. You know, and it'd get boring. I've seen people saying that, like, you ruined the horse's legacy by staying over hurdles. You know, but like, champion hurdle is a, is a championship race. Like, you know, and then there's other people saying that he should go to handicaps, and you know, the great would possibly and win that off top weight, and that that would be more impressive than winning a grade one. Um, you know, and then I even saw one person saying that he should go to the Turners. Like, you know. Like you have a champion hurdle horse, like I, I think going to the Turners and whatnot. Um, I know what I do with the Turners. Crazy, like, sorry, I'd been the Turners anyway. The Turners can fuck off, a waste of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like put it this way, like if he's winning that twenty to one on and ten to one on, like that price reflects how unbelievable and how talented the horse is. Like Nicky Henderson and Michael Buckley and everyone else involved doesn't really care if you can't back the horse you know if it's not a backable price like Gandon yeah. is obviously a big part of horse racing but it's not the be all and end all of it like you know sit back enjoy watching you know potentially the best hurdler we've ever seen you know like if you can't get your tenure on so be it um you know and the price reflects how supremely talented the horse is and then like with regards to legacy like you know like we're talking about grade ones we're talking about the champion hurdle the championship race um, I'm not old enough to remember Isterbrach neither are you Killian no. but like he's still spoken extremely fondly about you know yeah. Uh, and then follow that up with like the top weight half handicap and all that like Michael Buckley doesn't pay Nicky Henderson probably 1500 a month there thereabouts to entertain us like you know he, he pays them to win grade ones to win prize money and you know and try and do that for as long as possible you know and running in grade ones uh, are running in handicaps of top weight, giving huge weight away to the rest of the field. It's only putting the horse under needless pressure for a pot less than what he'd get in grade ones. So, you know, I think 100% the right decision was was made. You know, they're not here to, to keep me and you happy and to keep everybody else happy. happy. They're there to do their own bit. And like, Jesus, there's no shame whatsoever in, in a champion hurdle horse. And please God, he goes... Well, I don't know. I won't say please God he wins four or five, like because there's great horses here in Ireland um that'll take him on as well. Like we've seen there with Stateman and uh uh Impera Pass. Pass, yeah. Uh the, the two of them, um, you know, both staying over hurdles. Like in any other year, either of them would be a savage winner of the yeah. champion hurdle. Like he's got a real test to beat them. Now I know he's supremely talented, but that's no easy feat. Uh, to beat the two of them and if he can go and beat them fair juice to him and to be honest I look forward to that race as much as any uh, at the Cheltenham Festival this year Um, you know if we were to get the three of them to turn up yeah I, I, I'd agree with a lot of what you said I, I do think probably like if as they said if you don't think he's going to get three mile two um, what's the point going over fences like the champion hurdle in my eyes is, is the second biggest race of the week in Cheltenham after the after the gold cup um, used to like until probably you know maybe the last five or six years, a bit longer when horses stopped really staying over hurdles, it was it was my favorite race. I remember years ago like you'd see some like Hurricane Fly, Faheen, Jet Ski, like some serious horses all taking each other on in them Grade Ones. Um, it was it was a savage race. Now the one thing about Constitution Hill staying over hurdles and what it means is the fact that he's one to twenty on against 
really, really limited hurdlers in the UK. I know he can only beat what's in front of him. And like you could make an argument, why doesn't he come to, why doesn't State Manor and Perry Pass come to Kempton at Christmas? And maybe they will. I don't know. I yeah. can't predict the future. But um, I do think that it'll be used as a stick to beat him that like he won't have, he might never travel outside of the UK. He might never come to Ireland. Um, I do think he should come to Leopardstown yeah. for an Irish champion hurdle in February at the Dublin Racing Festival. I don't think he will. I think yeah, he should I'm, go. I'm not sure off the top of my head how that fits in with the grade one schedule over there. But like if, uh, but I sure, be going the, out, if, they, if they want to pick up prize money and if they feel that it fits into the schedule, go and do it. But don't be coming over for the sake of it. Um, but you know, what do you and mean like, the schedule, like it, it fits the schedule because, like, well, that's, State that's, Man is going to run at Christmas. Said. State Man will run at Christmas. State Man will run in Leopardstown, and then State Man will go to Cheltenham or in Perry yeah, Pass. But uh, is what is there any grade ones? Just probably not between. There's nothing between Christmas and in the Christmas hurdle and and the uh, the international hurdle. That's a, that's a grade two, so they're yeah, on about yeah, going well, to that. Then, but like, so yeah, I'd go, be come I'd on, be delighted here, like you know, I think he should. And if he doesn't, it will be used to stick to beat him. Like Frankel, the English want to say he's the best flat horse of all time. He never fucking wandered outside England. How do you know until you you come and take on horses that are putting it up to you in champion hurdles in their own back garden? Like, um, like Irish yeah. horses have to travel. Oh, they say, oh, the risk for traveling. Sure, state man has a risk for traveling over into the UK. So does Imperial Pass. Like Hurricane Fly was a great horse. He was never seen at his best over in Cheltenham, but you had to come on in, in Leopardstown. He'd, he'd absolutely batter you. So Constitution Hill has to prove he's able to travel as well to be to be it's, called one of the greats. Like Yeah, it's it's a it's a fair point, and I hope he comes over. It'd be savage to see it. Yeah. But and and you've by what you've said there, he has no real excuse. There's nothing there that he'd be missing in the UK. So it could very easily uh fit his fit his race planning for next year and that. Um, you know, but I, I, I don't agree with the fact that just because he's winning at twenty to one on and ten to one on, it's a stick to beat him with. He's that for a reason because of how good he is. Um, you know, and if he's scaring away horses, so be it. That's not his fault. You know. Yeah, but he's not. He's not scaring away horses in the UK. They simply aren't there to race against him. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But I'm. I'm sure there'll be. I'm sure over the course of his career, there'll be plenty of horses who will. Yeah, uh, I'm sure, I'm be, sure they, they, be they, away. they might find yeah. one or two, yeah. Um, yeah, at, the the, at this current moment years. in time, it's a very yeah. weak division over there. Yeah. But um, look, I I look forward to seeing Constitution Hill as much as any horse next Absolutely, year. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I think we're both on the same page there that uh, that they've done the right thing. Definitely. Um, right, Killian. Sure. Look, we we'll get straight into the straight into the main the main show here. The tent to follow. Um, I leave you head away first there with with your first pick. My first pick in this. Episode and my sixth overall is a uh, is rare again. I'm going over to England. Um, it's actually the second time I'm venturing across for one, and I I'll have another one later as well. Uh, Paul Nichols this time. Uh, won a bumper horse from last year. That's probably it took a bit of finding. You know, uh, it wasn't he wasn't one of the more flashier ones. Um, he won a won a bumper in your talkster. His name's Farnog. Um, so he's a Camelot gelding half brother to Hawkeye of Tim Easterby and Trevor Hemmings. He was a 145 rate hurdler. Um, he was second in a point to point to better days ahead that Bechtov stood on. He's in training with Gordon Elliott. He would have been a fancy bumper horse last year. Uh, so he second to him in a point to point. He got a rate in a 91. Then he sold for £125,000. Um, funny enough, actually, the Holdens lost money on him. They bought him for €145 Euro at the store sales the previous year and sold him for £125. So that wasn't a great piece of business. And they're mm-hmm. a very shrewd operation. They don't, that's rare that happens. Um, So his 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 British debut was in New Toxter, got a racing post rating of 112. He beat a horse who I like of John Joe O'Neill's called Hastings. Um, Hastings was given him £10 that day, courtesy of a couple of wins over in France. But he beat him by a length that day. He did a lot. He did a lot right that day, I thought. He was he was up with the pace. That wasn't where you wanted to be. Ollie Murphy had the favour of the race. He fell out of the back of the television, having been handy. The leader fell out of the back of the television. He was the only one that, that was up in the box that actually stayed up there for the entire race. I think the place where it wanted to be was off the pace there. They went pretty hard, as they do in a lot of English bumpers. But in Hastings' next start, he was beaten a length by Farnog. He was third in a grade two bumper in entry. 
got a racing post rating of 122. So I think the form is pretty solid. Um, Brian e. Frost rode him that day, so that would lead you to believe he wasn't too fancied that if Harry Cobden wasn't there. Yeah. So, and I suppose. Would he, you see he, him? Would you see him as possibly a two mile, or would you see him stepping up? Or I'd, I'd any... say I'd say he'd be he'd be a two and a half mile horse. Uh, to, he, yeah. to be honest, uh, minimum, yeah. Um, he seems to be a pretty strong stayer, and like he just kept going that day. Like even turning around the home bend, if you watch the race back, he's not traveling really, really well, and he just doesn't stop, and he stays going, and he did he did. Again, as I said, I, I don't think the place to be was was handy and um the horses that came from off the pace all all had their crack at them and they weren't good enough to get past. Okay. Okay, that's uh that's fair enough. It's good to, to start off with an English horse too to keep the English listeners happy. Yeah, keep them happy. Um, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um my first one of uh this uh five, so the the sixth one, um is Nick Rocket. Uh Willie Mullins. Uh look He's been well enough documented, I think, in the off season and last year. You know, he was a late bloomer. He was seen the bumper in February, won it at minimum fuss, um, turned out quickly then for a maiden hurdle again, won at minimum fuss, and a grade two, uh, at at Fairy House at Easter, um, over two mile four. Uh, he's going to take defenses this year. He looks a big, strong, strapping sort. Um, I don't think that like he, he's been running over two mile, two mile four. I don't see him staying at those trips. He's definitely one to step up and trip. And I think he's been touted as a RSA horse uh, by and large uh, on a lot of different podcasts and previews I've read on that. But I wouldn't be getting stuck in for an RSA right now. I think wherever he goes, he'll win races. But I just be thinking... What else will Willie have in that three mile chase and division? You know, he's always stacked with horses. You don't know where they come out of, but he just always has you know horses in every division. And I just be wondering, is this fella really going to be his best three mile chaser? And I'd be hesitant, uh, definitely hesitant to, to get involved now. If I was getting involved now, I'd probably go for the four miler. Uh, he looks as if he's a horse who will just stay and stay and stay. And if Willie has something classier, which I suspect he might, uh, then you'd see this fella possibly stepping up to the four miler. Um, so maybe any race or that. But look, it is not all about Cheltenham either way. Uh, but just with, with that in mind, uh, I wouldn't be getting stuck into the RSA at the moment. No, that's fair enough. He's he's a horse I like as well. Like there was, he was very impressive in Fairy House that day, and like only his that was the second start over hurdles. It's. It's very impressive to do to do things like that. Now I wouldn't say the race was was any great shakes either. Like, but I suppose the Henry de Bromid horse Deep Cave is now out in France. He's won a beginners chase out there, so he's he's franked it a small bit. And then of course you've the the Dennis Hogan horse that was second. I think he's he's running well in handicaps and stuff. So. Yeah, you yeah. could be onto a nice one there. Um, and the, the colours, uh, Stuart and, and Sadie Andrew, like they're not the biggest, most prominent colours in horse racing with no disrespect either to them. But, you know, you'd be thinking maybe with owners like that, they might be happier, depending on what way the season pans out, going to the four miler rather than potentially being the third string or second string horse for Willie in the RSA. Now, it could be off the mark there. He could be number one. But look, um, we, we'll find out in due course. All right, Killian, on to your, your next one. I think you're staying in the same yard, are you? I'm staying in the same yard, yeah. Very uninspiring. Um, but he's just he's just so damn good. Uh, I've gone with a rich Richie horse. Uh, I know you're you're a big fan of those silks yourself. Um I am. He's called Dr. Eggman, uh bumper horse last year. Uh so he made his debut for Willie in Fairy House in a, in a sales bumper, part of a one, two, three for Willie that day. He was third. Uh, the horse that won it hasn't been seen since. The horse that was second is Lecky Watson, who was ran a lot of grade one bumpers last year and high class bumpers. Um, and Pat Taff rode him that day. So on jockey bookings, you'd expect that he was he was third string behind Patrick and Jody. They would have got their picks before Pat Taff. So he ran pretty well that day. Uh, he's then been off the track for a year. Uh, he rocked up at Punchestown for a bumper. And I think this could be one of the best bumpers run in Ireland last year uh, outside of a grade one or graded bumper. So you'd walk away, Harry, who was actually very close to making my list for Charles Burns. Um, 
He was third to Shannon Royale of Robcor and Gordon Elliott in Clonmel before winning this race. Uh, but I suppose Charles's record with doing a lot of messing with horses it put you off for a tin to follow purposes I suppose uh, he might take three goals to win a hurdle race like um, Irish Panther for uh, um, the Mulrines was second he's a really nice horse as well uh, Quantum Storm for Gordon Elliott was third and or fourth and Lecky Watson for Willie Mullins who'd previously beaten Dr Eggman in a bumper the year previous at Ferry House was fifth. I think that was the race. Patrick had a bit of a concussion when he went out and he wasn't sure where he finished. So he got a race and post rating of 124 that day. If you look back at the race, obviously he's very fresh, having not ran in a year. Uh, Jody was on him that day, pulled really hard throughout the race. Uh, they tried to hold him up. He didn't really want to be held up and pulled his way up to mid-division. Then turning in, he made a move on the outside, had to go four or five horses wide, and he passed a few on the way on the run in, but like you're going that far wide in Punchestown isn't really a help. The the winner was was towards the inner and so was the second. So that sort of extra ground he covered might have sort of cost him coming a bit closer to the to the front too. Um so his run after that he went to Ballon Robe on good ground. Now bear in mind he's ran on softer surfaces before this. This is Ballon Robe in May, rattling good ground. Uh, he's given thirteen pounds away to a really good John McConnell horse that's actually running tomorrow, I believe. Now we're recording this on Friday evening. Uh, Intense approach is the name of the John McConnell horse. Um, he's running in Listole on Saturday against another nice Willie Mullins horse. Um, I I don't know. Hopefully he wins it and Frank's the form for Doctor Eggman anyway. Um, but anyway, that race in Ballon Robe, he needed every yard of the two miles to get up on that good ground. The surface probably wouldn't have suited him. Patrick rode him on the day and he just got up in the dying strides to, to deny Dr. Eggman or to deny intense approach. And as I said, giving away 13 pounds, it's a, it's a fair quack of weight as well. Yeah. Um, ideally this horse would be getting a, a sounder surface. He's by Santa Saint, the sire of um, protector at faster, slow jacketum. They all went better on these soft, softer surfaces. So I'd imagine soft ground and a trip over the winter. Um, I could yeah. see him being being definitely a graded horse. Um, okay. And I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you about the last one. If you were to nail your colours to a mast uh, at the moment, two mile, two and a half mile or three mile? I'd say two and a half minimum. I okay. like He's going to want three miles in the future at some stage. Like that, that day, Ballon Row was a very sharp track, obviously. And he did need every yard of it to two miles on good ground. So, like they'll probably, I think, could start him off at two and a half, and you'd look at stepping up. But it's all dependent on what Willie has and where this lad ranks. Like if yeah. he was in a smaller yard, I'd say two and a half miles, maybe even three for definite. But you don't know Willie. Like he could be campaigned for a Martin Pipe or the Coral Cup, anything. Who knows? Like so, yeah. I suppose it's just a matter of what else Willie has in that division and where this lad ranks in that. Okay. Okay. Very good. And he fits the sort of profile that I'd always look for in a bumper in terms of he stayed away from the big grade ones. He stayed oh, away yeah, from Cheltenham. Yeah. Um, that's a, a big negative for me. On to my next one. So, uh, and it's away from Willie Mullins' yard, but uh, it's it's in a place that Willie would be quite familiar with. We're going over to France for this one. And Willie is well used to going over to France and getting a few himself. Uh, but he, he hasn't got this one. Ile Francais is the name. Um, He's only a five-year-old, and I'll put my hands up. I'm not, like, when I'm looking at that French farm, I'm not the best at making it out, making out how good it is. Um, is. I'm not, don't follow French racing, uh, and that's the long and short of it. Now, what I do know what this fella is, I can read it to a certain extent, and he's already a grade one winner, and he's only five. Uh, he has one start over fences, um, and he won that rather easily. He was originally trained by Tom George when he did win the grade one in France. Um, and now it's his son, Noel George, who trains him in partnership with Amanda Zetterholm. I hope I have the name the pronunciation right there. But they've just two things with him, I suppose. One, it's very clear that they think an awful lot of this horse. They haven't hid that. They've spoke about him winning a French champion chase or French gold cup over three and a half miles 
they do think a lot of him. And number two is they have made it clear that they're going to campaign him in Britain this year, uh, which makes him very exciting. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail around this horse because I can't read that French form too well. But I do know somebody who can read the French form very well, and I consider him to be very clued in when it comes to French racing and that. And I dropped him a message a couple of days ago. I said, look, I'm looking at this fella. I think I might add him into the tent to follow. He, I was sort of on defense about him, to be honest. And uh, his opinion on him was that he's the best horse in France. Um, so may, make it that what you will. Um, but I'm looking forward to seeing how he'll fare up in Britain anyway. And he's a novice as well, isn't he? He is indeed. He is indeed. He's a novice, so, all right. Um, he'd be looking at a Cotto star, Kempton at Christmas, is it? Uh, possibly. I, I think they said that they were going to start him in Sandown uh, and then see from there. They don't know whether they'll go down in trip or go up in trip. Um, there was an article there and at the races, if you put the name into Google, you'll find it. But they were saying that they see him as possibly a horse that can win over three and a half miles in a French Gold Cup down the line. So with that in mind, they probably don't want to step back in trip, but they seem to be still on the fence about it. So he must have enough speed that they're not totally sure what way they're going to go with him. But he's going to start over two and a half anyway and uh, and then see from there. But Ile Francais uh, is, is probably one to can, keep on. Can, can you for. spell that for our viewers now? I tell you, uh, I-L-E-S-T-F-R-A-N-C-A-I-S. It's like okay. the, the Friday spelling test in school here. <laughs> on, on we're going chasing. Yeah, uh, now uh, we'll we'll swing straight back to you there, Killian. Um, what do you have next for us? What's next on the agenda? My my agenda, I'm actually going back to the UK uh, oh, okay. for, for another one. Uh, Very good. I'm going to Gary Moore. So this horse was actually in France as well, keeping with your French tr- trend. Uh, yeah. So another, another baguette here. Uh, his name is Inniston, I-N-N-E-S-T-O-N. Uh, I don't think he needed it spelt, but there it is. Um, so in October 2021, that's what I thought too. Can we call him Innes Timon? Perhaps we can. Perhaps. Uh, for, our, for our English viewers, Innes Timon is probably one of the nicest towns in Ireland. It's, <laughs> it's down there in, in County Clare and it's 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 very, very good. Uh, I'd say no. anyone that is planning on coming to Ireland, don't leave Innes Timon <laughs> off your list. Um, and thanks to Fall Charland for the large brown envelope they gave me to mention in its timing. <laughs> but back to back to his race over in France, uh, in Le Mans, in October 2021, he beat a horse called Irish Point. Uh, if you recall, Irish Point won a Grade One in Aintree last year and was placed in another couple of Grade Ones in Ireland. Now, this horse, off a 440 day break, arrived in the UK to Gary Moore's ran on New Year's Eve in Newbury and was beaten 23 lengths by Jupiter Jeet in an introductory hurdle at Newbury. He's ran five times since winning twice. Uh, he's now rated 127. His probably best couple of pieces of form came in, in novice handicaps, uh, premier handicap in Sandown where he was beaten by Crambo of Fergal O'Brien um, I think that day he just he was very free throughout the race and I, I just think he he used up a lot of his gas he raced of 117 that day and following that he got seven pounds for a half a length defeat went to Newbury and stepped up in that form again was beaten three lengths by Blow Your Wad of Tom Lacey he was a very good horse given him Blow Your Wad was given Inniston uh, four pounds that day a race and post rating of 129. And then his final start of the season came in Newton Abbott in Novice Hurdle. Um won by a length at four to nine. Nothing, nothing too hectic. Just get the win on the board. Uh that was him done up for the season then. Um the sort of angle I like about him is the fact that he's number one, a half brother to Delta Work, Elwood, and Cap York, all three ex Jigginstown horses. And also the Boodles winner from last year, Jazzy Matty. So there's a concern he's a small bit exposed over hurdles, but since he's gone up to that two and a half mile trip, um, the first day at Sandown when he when he won his won a handicap hurdle off 111, um, he's he seemed to have thrived going up in trip, and I think fences and and even perhaps a further step up in trip could bring out further improvement in him. The what I like about it though is, and I think England is great for this, that you can run in in chases off your hurdles, Mark. 
and his hurdles mark is definitely lenient compared to what he could do over fences going going by the family that he's in like dealt to work obviously multiple grade one winner Elwood was rated in the 140s I think um he was 135 139 uh chaser Cap York as well for for Noel Mead and Jigginstown he was he was a 140 chaser as well so this lad definitely has scope for improvement being from that family and I think Gary Moore hits these these really good patches throughout the year and like the way Day is there he'll win with the he'll go on runs he'll win with the stable cat this lad could be turned out very quickly too he's raced pretty close together like if you look at his races 31st December 29th of January 16th February 11th of March 25th of March 8th of April there those last three runs coming in less than a month so you can turn them out quickly enough too and I think yeah. 127 it's there for the taking and, and like looking even back to back to that bumper form over a mile and a half in France beating Irish point that that's that's a fair bit of stuff you'd imagine he'd be better than 127 having done that yeah, it's interesting actually. Ile France, the horse that I've just spoke about, has horse has farm linking in with Irish Point as well. Oh, does he? Uh, I think Irish Point ran three or four times over there. Yeah, but he, he does indeed. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of horses going straight into handicap chases in the UK? Do you like savage? It? Savage. Do you? Why yeah, though? He, I, he I, I don't know if I fully agree with it, but it seems to work for them. So work away. But yeah, well, like you, you don't have to. If you have a horse that's like you know he's going to be a better chaser and you don't have to show your hand straight away either. Like, you know, if you have a 110 hurdler and you think, oh, he's going to be a stone and a half better chaser, like you have to go running three beginners traces in Ireland to get a mark and then fuck it, you're, he gives you 120. Now you only have six pounds of potential improvement as opposed to a stone and a half and it gives you a chance to win more races. Now, I don't think it would work in Ireland. <laughs> Lads yeah. would be too, like, because our, our, the way the Irish horses are, the horse trained in Ireland, they all want to be over fences. Like, everyone wants a, a chaser, really, and there'd be some fucking messing going on. So, Savage, yeah. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be absolutely ridiculous. Like, so yeah. it's probably a good thing we don't have it in Ireland. But I do think, like, we have those rated novice races or beginner's chases instead. So that, that's sort of fair enough, too. But, um, I, I do think it's it's a, it's a good deal. And, like, you know, if a horse, let's say, like, I think, like him, like Inniston. He's he's well capable of being definitely a stone better over fences, and yep. like if Gary Moore can can get a couple of wins into him before he reaches his mark, isn't it great for the owner too? Yeah, okay, very good. Uh, that brings me on to my next one. Uh, we're going back to Ireland for this, and I do have an English horse. I'd probably call him in at number ten, but uh, we're going to Garden Elliott's yard, Landrake. Possibly one who went in under the radar a small bit last year. He wasn't top class as such. He was rated about 135 over hurdles. Uh, started out last year uh, in a bumper. He was third actually behind Goodland. Uh, and then he went on to beat Corbett's Cross in a maiden hurdle uh, before his move to Emmett Mullins in, in the JP Colours. But it was probably his second to senior chief at Navin. Um, on his final start, which is in March, which was early enough to be finishing the season. But it was that race that really sticks out in my mind. Uh, he went the whole way around uh, in front. He got three or four lengths from the field. You could say he had his own way out in front. But to me, even watching the race, I just visually thought, I said, this fella's a sitting duck. He's just waiting to be swallowed up and passed. And it was only jumping the last when Senior Chief who was no poor horse, who was a, a decent yardstick for Henry de Bromhead, uh, senior chief, anyway, joined him jumping the last and passed him. And you would have felt the senior chief should have went on and won by three or four lengths. But the way Landrake stayed on that day, uh, I thought was very striking. Now, he was stepped up and tripped that day to two miles six after running, we say, over two mile, two mile two, where they're on in the year. So I, I think absolutely he stays um, but I just think when a horse has an attitude like that, he they're one to follow. Um, you know because you're going to get a good honest run every day. Um, and that's what you would have got from Landrick last year. Now look, uh, as I said, he he wasn't quite top level, nor was he tried in the top level, given his chance there. And I do find it hard to see where exactly he'll fit in novice chasing this year. Um, in terms of trip more so. Uh, like. I think he's fast enough. He's got enough speed. If he's a good, fast jumper, he'll be fine over two mile and he'll be a bit of a two mile stayer as such. Um, 
And, you know, by all means, th- that could suit him. If he's a slower jumper, you know, three miles, he'll see that out no problem at all. Um, We've seen horses grow legs chasing before, and this fella could just take the fences. Um, you know, he's, he's one I really do like. Um, But, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him run. Yeah, I agree with you 100% there. He's a great attitude, and, like, again, he could be one that definitely improves over fences, so... He's a super pick, I think. Yeah. Okay, Killian, we're into our final two each. Uh, you're up again. Yeah. Uh, my final two of a common team. They're both in the green and gold oh. of, of of Limerick, Hurling's Sugar Daddy, J.P. Manis. Uh, <laughs> the first one is a, a mare called uh, Birdie or Bust uh, of Henry de Bromheads. I believe if anyone follows our Twitter page, they would have seen a photo of her up the last day with a very cryptic message underneath. But basically she's she's a five year old mayor uh, out of walk in the park and a beneficial mayor er, yeah that's right uh she went to Tremor on New Year's Day last year for a maiden hurdle beaten three and a quarter lengths by by a horse called Quay de Paris nothing special Quay de Paris actually ended up running in the Dublin Racing Festival the two mile six race uh the what's it called the Nathaniel Lacey uh, so he went off one to five or something that day below in Tremor and beat Birdie or Bust by three and a quarter lengths. She was second that day as a pretty good run. Um, But anyway, she went into Fairy House and probably disappointed a small bit uh, in a maiden hurdle in the end of January. She was she was well beaten 11 lengths in second by, by another nice Willie Mullins horse called uh, In Excess. So a familiar theme there of Willie just catching you. Um. But I suppose her, her third piece, her third run, I suppose, was in uh, May in Tipperary on good ground. So she's came away from that sort of softer winter surface. She had a 100 day break there. She went off four to seven. Rachel just bounced out and met all one by 14 lengths as easy as you want. Um, By all accounts, she's she's going to be a lot better over fences. Um, like you look at her racing post rates, they're 105, 116, 125. I'm no handicap maker, but like if you were to give her a mark, where would that land you? Somewhere in the region of 120 or something. Um, she'd probably get over hurdles. I'd say she'll be she'd be a stone better anyway. Uh could see yeah. a stone and a half better over me, fences. Me, me is a funny time to be running these horses who were sort of yeah. looking so like because yeah, we it was the same with Dr. Eggman before yeah. in a bumper that was on good ground. You were saying it was very hard. This yeah. is on good to yielding as well, Tipperary in May. Yeah. Uh it's 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 strange, but I suppose they were just mad to get the run in, probably. Mad uh, to get the run. Know. Mad to get her her win over hurdles and she's going she's going chasing over fences or going chasing this season. We're going chasing with Birdie or Bust and JP. Um, so uh, she's she's yeah. going chasing this year. She's I guarantee you she's going to be at least a stone better over fences, if not more. And like that'll bring her up to sort of a, a 140, well, potentially a 130, 140 class of a mare. And like she is only a five year old, so who knows what she looked. She was really nice down in Henry's the last day when I was there. And like she's 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 a nice mare, she's she's big and um. I think she she's going to be she's going to be nice over fences, but I wouldn't say it'd be like a mare's chase now at all. I'd say she'll be she'll be a two miler, um, by walk in the park. The the dams, dams half sister is the dams. Is a half sister to Lyrene Legend of Desi Hughes. There was a second to Lord Windlemere in RSA one time, but um, I think I think this one now would be. Like judging by her runs over hurdles now, she's like I'd say, say two miles would be, it'll be her her game, and yeah, I think she she's she's supposed to have school nicely over fences now too. You're so gone, br- you're gone big into your breeding stats tonight. Yeah, yeah, I was sure I just talk. You must, like I'm you must have to... got a wing sleep last night. <laughs> you should see me with the with the breeding book at night. Oh what stop! I've never heard about you, so many brothers you, and sisters. You and couldn't, that. you couldn't get me off it. Oh, stop. I was you going to make a joke there about so many yeah. brothers and sisters, but I I won't. <laughs> um, You're no mine... meant to talk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and to... No, not that. Not that. On to mine. Um, Mr. Policeman uh, is my second final pick. Um, Again, I won't apologize for having a Rich Ritchie horse in my tent to follow. I don't think it would be complete. Uh, I had to, had to make space uh, to have one in there. Look, he's a real talking horse. He had two runs in France. 
um, and then came over to Ireland, had one run over hurdles last year, um, and it was a very impressive run for a horse who's five, uh, first start in Ireland, first start for Willie Mullins, to beat horses rated in the high mid to high one forties. Uh, cashback was second in the race but to beat horses of, of that caliber on your first run by two or three lengths um is fairly striking all the talk is that he's going chasing next year uh he looks as if he's got a, an abundance of speed uh you know you'd be looking at the article there i'd imagine um look it's quite well documented in racing circles he seems to be a bit of a talking horse that he does have a, a great level of ability but uh, he's sixteen to one for the Arkel there at the moment, and uh, look, sure, I wouldn't be getting too stuck in either at that price, to be honest. Such as the way anti post betting is gone, but that's that's the price he is, and uh, yeah, just just looking forward to seeing him too because uh, he seems to be supremely talented. Absolutely. Gillian, would, would you go on? Which would you rate a better price, better value at the moment, Mister Policeman at sixteens for an Arkel or? Um, Facile Vega at I don't know is he five to one or some six to one or something maybe Facile Vega not a, no I wouldn't I would be against I'd be against him uh, I just would um, so you you'd, not... you'd, you'd rate Mister Policeman a better value pick at this stage would you certainly certainly a better yeah. value pick I wouldn't go near I wouldn't go near um Facile Vega to be perfectly honest at this stage I would I have. I have the exchange up here for the air Yeah, well, here. I was going to say if you yeah. gave me 10 to 1 in Facile Vega, I'd leave it off. Yeah. Mary no. National, 3.55. Facile Vega, 5.6. Third in the betting, 11.5 on the exchange, Mr. Policeman. And like, your 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 French horse, actually, Ile Francais is 38 there. You can, you can have 42 on Constitution Hill if you're an Im- imbecile. And um, so, like, again, like, <laughs> it's well documented. I'm not a huge Basile Vega fan. I think he's grand. Um, if Marine National runs against him again, he'll beat him again. Um, that'd be my 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 take on it. And like, I I'd happily take a bigger price on Mister Policeman for an article. Yeah, sixteens or whatever he is. Uh, I'll, and, I'll tell you. and hope he improves. Maybe he ends up being being better because I wouldn't back Fast Vega at five or six to one. Not a fear. Yeah, I'd say he needs a trip anyway. But yeah, there's a lot of people talking about Marine National and if he won't take the fences and that. I actually unearthed uh, quite an interesting quote from Sam Curling. Uh, he's. I'll read it out in full here to you. I bought Marine National as a foal, so we got to know him well. He was always unbelievable over a fence. I think he'll be some chaser. His work was always really, really good. I deal a lot with Jerry Hogan, and he was the one who put it all together. He'd seen some work well in Bolta, and we bought him up to work with one of Barry's horses. He liked him and bought him. But uh, he goes on then further in the piece to, to speak about him over fences as well. Yeah. But uh, look, I, I think seeing a quote like that, would put your mind at ease as to how he's going to take the fences. And I'd have Marine National. If I was having if I was going to have a bet now, it would be Marine National. If if it was between Marine National and Fasal Vega, it would be Marine National. Oh, um, it wouldn't even be a question for I, me. And 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 I don't care. Yeah. I don't care what price I'm getting on either of them. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'd 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 back Marine National at fucking stupid short odds against your man. I'd be so confident he'd beat him. <laughs> sure, like he he gave him he, your man got to run the race in the Supreme and your man still glided by him. Like, oh stop. He'd absolutely <laughs> batter him. Right, right. We'll we'll keep this moving. We've both one horse left. Um, and I'm going back to England for my final one. But Killian, we'll leave you wrap up yours there first and, and we'll get this done and dusted under the yeah, fifty minutes. Hopefully. Absolutely. I'd say I reckon this lad could be the captain. Um could it? it's very possible, yeah. I haven't really I haven't really given a captain yet. So I'd say if I was to have a captain, I, I'd go with this fella. Mirrors or West for Willie Mullins and JP. Um He's Westerner. I'm going to keep with the the theme of of <laughs> um of this, but it's not just Westerner. He's he's a he's a full brother to to Fernie Hollow, um, which is which is very very good. Obviously, Fernie Hollow, absolutely brilliant animal, just plagued with injuries, um. So obviously, Willie knows that family well, and hopefully, Mirrors or West doesn't end up like Fernie Hollow, but. He went to drum a hand for his point to point, um, and he ended up falling 
at the second or the last, I think, was it? Yeah, the last. Uh, he was two or three lengths clear and he was he was going really well when he felt he was going to absolutely hose up. Uh, they gave him a rate in a 93, which is, is fairly solid. But what he did in Nace, I thought, was was devastating enough now, to be honest. Uh, it was just a bumper there, two miles, yielding soft ground at the end of March. And he's won by four and a half lengths to a Paul Nolan horse called He's My Hero, who went and got beaten by four lengths by Walkaway Paul in a Punchestown bumper after that. But the horse in third, Mahan's Way of Henry de Bromhead and Chievely Park, I know they think a lot about him. Uh, he won a point to point as well, got a rate in a 93 too. Um, but he was he was a big buy out in Cheltenham last November. I think Dennis Hogan trained him for his um his point to point, and he was a big money buy. And Mirazor West absolutely battered him. He was, I'm pretty sure he was, he was odds odds against the night before the race or the day of the race. He's gone off one to two. Like they couldn't have had enough on him. Like he just bounced out and made the whole lot. Uh, Mahan's way came to challenge him, and he just kicked him aside. Uh, beaten him by five and a quarter lengths. Keys my hero was second, but it was just it was so impressive. He could have won by double the length if he wanted to. And like as you said before, this is what we want in bumper horses. Just give them an education. No need to absolutely batter them to win races. And like it's it was an impressive bumper performance I've seen in a long time. And I think he could be an absolute weapon. I think he's okay. all, all speed. Like okay. like Tommy Hollow, he's all speed. Now the next thing is quiz question. Go on. When is the last time JP won the Supreme Novices? I thought I had it right, but I wasn't. Oh, it's a fucking long time ago. Yeah, it is a long time ago. That's yeah. what I'm thinking because I can't remember any in the last ten yeah. years. Anyway, I got the year right, but I got the horse. Well, I didn't. I didn't know the year, but I the horse that I said ran in that year. I thought he actually won the race. Okay, I, 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 I won't get. The, I'm just going to guess a year. I'm going to say, two thousand and four. No, it was two thousand and eight. I would have guessed binocular. Won it in okay. two thousand eight. Well, I, I I would have guessed binocular was his last winner, but he actually didn't win it. Captain CB beat binocular in two thousand and eight. He won two that year. But 2008, the last time, he's hit the crossbar any amount of times. Get me out yeah. of here was second in 2010. Darlan second in 2012. My Tinger Yours yeah. and Jetski were behind Champagne Fever. And then, obviously, Chantry House was third a few years ago. John Bond second to Constitution yeah. Hill. So, but it's a hell of a long time for It's a long like time, yeah. And he does oh. run a lot of horses in the Supreme. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. A hell of a long time. Yeah, like he'd okay. like a butterfly won it in 2002. He's had, is that a day? Yeah. They're probably his only winners. It's, it's, it's a yeah. drought. It is a drought. Yeah, for, yeah. It's and, a drought for JP. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that drought is going to be ended this year. Like, <laughs> Fernie Hollow couldn't make it to Cheltenham to win the Supreme, and he would have won the Supreme, be under no illusions. He'd have beaten appreciated. Right. But right. this lad is going to right the wrongs. Right. We'll wrap it up. My final one. And uh, before I go through my final one, Killian, after this, uh, I'm going to ask you for your captain so you can confirm that with us. And then your next best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my final one as I said I was going back to England for this so now I'm after doing England, Ireland and France in these five um, and I had a real nice English one actually in the in the previous five to follow as well uh, in the last video but this one is Douglas Talking, a seven year old for Lucinda Russell uh, had wind surgery last year and we've spoken about wind surgeries before on this podcast it seems to be like giving just giving a horse a drug like you know they're, they're <laughs> unreal <laughs> don't say they're that unreal. too loud Luke Cormer will come looking for it <laughs> be good um, but look he's uh, the wind surgery has turned this fella inside out uh, he's went and he won his next two handicap chases and then at the end of last year, he was just touched off at both entry and Punchestown. Finished second behind uh, Dancing on My Own and Dino Blue, respectively. And there's no shame uh, in either of them, really. He's going to be well found towards the top of any two-mile handicap chase that he turns up in next year. But the beauty of it is you're going to get your run with this fella. Jumping the second last, he's going to be in front. Um, He's a superb jumper and his style of run, and he just pops out in front. Um, it just pops over him and like to be honest I thought he was unlucky really to be worn down by both Dancing on My Own and Dino Blue he's rated 142 now I, I, that's not his ceiling I don't think so not the way he ran last year uh, that's not his ceiling 
second to Dino Blue, that form is enough, um, you know, to, to go on and win again. Um, you know, that was a, a fairly unenviable task, really. And he won't be meeting Dino Blue in a handicap anytime soon. So, Killian, that wraps up uh, each of ours 10 to follow. Um, it's good to good to have it all done because it took a fair bit of thought oh, uh, and a few lists and knocking in yeah. and trying to fit yeah. lads in. But sure, I got my Rich Ritchie horse fitted in anyway, so I was happy enough with that. And a few English ones that I actually really quite like. I possibly like the English ones more than my Irish ones, to be honest. But, Killian, we'll go to you first. First of all, your captain. Captain is the supreme winner, Mirazor West. Okay, very good. My captain, Oroko. Not sure what he'll win, but he's a fair <laughs> animal. <laughs> he'll win races. He will win races. He is a savage animal. Uh, Killian, your next best, Mascada. Mascada. Okay, that was in the last in the last yeah. video. Okay, very good. And my next best, I'd like to go, Mister Policeman. But I won't because he's been well found. He's been mentioned in other places too. One who has totally gone in under the radar, Straw Fan Jack for Sheila Lewis. Both my captain and the next best over in England. I was I about to it. say it. It's not like you. No, 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 it's not. It's not. But they're they're both over in the UK, I should say. And yeah. uh, you know, yeah. But look, it's uh, it's going to be a great season. We've a good list there to follow. Um, both of us. Uh, and, and see how we get on absolutely but look lads thanks very much for listening make sure if you haven't listened to, to the previous five that we both gave go back give that a listen let us know in the comments what you think we really appreciate any subscriptions uh, if you just press subscribe there on YouTube now I say subscriptions nearly as if it's going to cost you something cost you nothing <laughs> just, yeah, press, yeah. just yeah, press the subscribe know. button would appreciate that Um, and let us know in the comments if there's any you agree with, disagree with, or if there's any that you really like this year, let us know um, and we'd be interested to hear from you. Okay, lads, thanks very much. And don't forget one final vital piece of key, key information. <laughs> Next week, we're having Rob Atchison from Rob Core for part one of our interview with him. We're going to run through the open company hurdlers and the open company chasers that they have for this coming year. He gave us some great information last year when we did the, the interview with him and kindly he's agreed to come back again. Uh, so that's definitely one for the notebook. Monday, next week, be here or be square. Lads, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> Magic of love.